Hey guys, um, so I'm making this video to show you guys how to get an A on your physics lab reports. We're going to be doing lots of lab reports in this class, so I just wanted to make one that kind of goes over everything that I've been saying in class. Um, reminders, in my class, lab reports are worth just as much as tests, and the real goal of all of our labs is to understand your data. Okay, Your data should not be random numbers that you don't know what they mean. You've got to understand it. Because the point of physics and the point of what we're learning in our labs is to figure out patterns and relationships between things that we're collecting. So if you don't understand what your numbers mean, you're not going to do very well in your lab reports because you're, it's going to be clear that you don't see the patterns or see the relationships. So in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of using Excel. I'm going to show you how to check what you're going to be graded on what lab, so it's never a surprise how to save something as a PDF, and then how to turn it in through Jupyter Grades. Okay, so let's start with Excel. But before you do that, a couple things you need to know. In order to right-click on a Mac or on a Lenovo computer, it's a two-finger click. When I say to copy something, the hotkey for that is to select what you want to copy, and then press Command and C. For pasting, it's Command or Control if you're not on a Mac, and V. Okay. So you need to know that stuff first. So let's go to Excel. Okay, We'll be using Excel to do a lot of our data tables. And the cool thing about Excel is they can do the math for you. So in the, our first lab, we wanted to use it to calculate the speed or the velocity. In order to find that, it was 1.9 divided by the time through photo gate A. So I type in 1.9 divided by and I click on the cell that has the number I want it to use. Then I can click and drag this function down. This cell is now 1.9 divided by C3. This one is 1.9 divided by C4, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I can do the same with my other column that I needed to use. Oh, missed one. Okay. If like here, you have a lot of decimal places that you don't really need. Sometimes it'll give you numbers like this. You don't want that. Those numbers don't mean anything. Okay. Typically, the rule is two decimal places, and you're probably good to go. Also note that I don't have any units in here. Excel doesn't understand units. Now, say I'm going to create a graph. Okay. I want to graph my distance versus my time. So those are the two numbers I want to graph. I'm going to insert a marked scatter plot. Okay. Right now, my data switch, I actually want time to be on my x-axis. So I'm going to switch that real quick. My x values, I want to be time. My y values, I want to be distance. OK. There's only one graph here, so I don't need to do that. Anytime we do a graph, anytime we do a graph, I want it to be organized. So you need the title. It's always going to be your y. In this case, this is my distance versus your x. In this case, it is my time. Okay. So distance versus time. You're going to add your axis labels, making sure that they include units. And you're always going to add a trend line. In this situation, our trend is pretty linear. So I'm going to add a linear trend line, then go into options, and tell it to display the equation. Okay? So that it will give me my equation, equation on my graph. You can also edit things. Say I wanted to make this a little bit bigger. I can click on it and up the size. Um, say I wanted to add trend um, grid lines because it's bugging me that they're only horizontal ones and not vertical ones. You can also, of course, go into format and change some of the titles or elements um, of your graph. Okay, and give it a little bit more of a theme. So, typically, but not always, um, Excel documents are not pretty to transfer 
to upload anywhere, okay? They get messy. So we're going to want to copy and paste it into a Word document. Sometimes I might have what you need downloaded onto Excel for you, onto Jupyter Grades for you. For example, for our first lab, I have the template right here, okay? It'll be in your to-do. If it's not there, you can just go to um, grades for your physics class and find the assignment that you're working on. In this case, it's the lab 3.3. I'm going to download the document that I need, the Word document, and it'll be in there. You would want to change this to your name. I'm going to pretend like this is example student. I want part three, the data table. So I'm going to copy and paste it. Select what I want to copy. Command or control C. Switch over to here. Command or control V. And then I want to add borders so that it looks better. Okay. I can also adjust the size. Um, maybe make things so that they're centered. Anything like that. And guess what? I already did that, so I don't need the instructions. Now, I'm going to put in my position versus time graph. Okay, there is my graph. And typically, under each graph, there will be some analysis we have to do. Okay, so the trend is linear in this case. The slope, which is 67.24 centimeters per second, represents the speed. Um, it is consistent with data calculated by the table, okay. et cetera, et cetera, whatever type of analysis I'm asking for in that lab. Okay. And then I would do my other graph. The other graph is speed versus time, so I'm just going to do that one really quick for you guys. I'm not talking because I'm going to edit this out. Okay, and see how right now when I pasted it, the formatting was kind of ugly. I have the title up here and then the graph down here. You never want to do that. You want to make sure that the titles and the graphs stay together. So I'm going to go ahead and just insert a page break in there um, so that it all goes on one page. I don't need the instructions anymore, so I'm going to delete those from my area and make sure that it's all good to go. Okay. That looks pretty good. I would write my analysis down here. And when you're ready to turn in, you're going to need to save first. Before we save it, let's check and see if I have everything that I need according to the rubric. So on Jupyter Grades, for any assignment that we do that we have to turn in through Jupyter Grades, I will include a rubric. Your rubric tells you what you're going to be graded on. Your data. To get a 5, it has to be complete, organized, rounded correctly, and logical. 
all data make sense for what was required in the lab. If it's not all there, but it's mostly there, you'll get a four. Um, in order to get the four, the four is normal. The five is perfect, the four is normal and good. Um, if there are any weird data points that you have that you didn't catch while you were doing the lab, explain those, okay? Show me that you understand the data and you will likely get an A. For the two graphs, okay, it'll also say, okay, my graph and analysis fully represents what was observed in the lab, shows clear understanding. It's labeled with a title as Y versus X, axis labels with units and appropriate trend line and equation. Let's go back. Okay, I think I have all of those on my graph. And then, of course, neatness and organization, which also includes whether or not it was turned in on time. Okay, so you're going to save it as a PDF with your last name in the title. Okay, this is the document that I want to turn in. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to call it Peterson Lab Peterson Physics Lab, okay? Or call it the title of the lab. I'm going to call it the title of the lab, actually. Analyzing Motion with Graphs, okay? So, and I'm going to save it to my desktop so I know where it is when I go to upload it. And I'm going to save it as a PDF, okay? Saving it as a PDF makes it so that it is no longer editable. So make sure not to save it as a PDF until you're ready to turn it in, okay? And make sure you also save it as the .docx or .doc, whatever it is, in case you want to go back to it. Okay. And ta-da, I've saved my Word document to my computer. So I go back over to Jupyter Grades. Okay. I'm turning in a PDF from this computer, or it might be in your Google Drive, so you can save it from your Google Drive. I'm going to save, upload it from the computer. I know that I saved it in the desktop. And there's what I want to turn in. Okay, once it says turned in, that's when you know you're done. Okay, so that's everything you need to know to get an A on your physics labs.